Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today, we are checking out the Nolly Bass Library by Get Good Drums, aka GGD. Also, don't look at me like that. I know I clickbaited you guys. You knew exactly what the video was about before you clicked on it. So let's get right into it. Everyone is testing out this bass library with heavy stuff. I've seen people testing it out with Gen, with Prog, with whatever you want. And I can't really blame. This thing sounds absolutely amazing in heavy music, but I wanted to see if I pulled up an old demo of mine, something that I did years and years and years ago, to see if it could bring that extra spice to that demo and maybe allow me to finally work the demo out. So for those of you that don't know, Nolly is obviously the bass player and producer for Periphery, absolutely amazing musician, amazing producer in general. I'll show you the solo bass track that I have here first and then we'll go into the song to see how it lifts it up. So this is how it sounds on the clean bass. <laughs> We have the DI. And the heavy bass. The heavy one is the one that people usually use for, well, the heavier stuff. I'm using the clean one on this. I have the sync rate up to 1 16th and a little bit of sub and tone added. I might take that tone down a little bit because it sounded a little bit too sharp. Humanizer is all the way up and the muting noise is a little bit down because there's not a lot of muting in this song. But this track is actually somewhat of a rockabilly, psychobilly track. If you're in that genre, you know exactly what I mean. Psychobilly being the merging of rockabilly and punk rock. And this bass tone lends itself absolutely amazing to this. So I'll show you what I've got without the bass on it. One thing that you immediately notice is with psychobilly, rockabilly, all that type of stuff, the guitars are very sharp. They're very penetrating in the mix. You need something to compensate for that. Obviously, there goes a lot of EQ into that. Make sure that it's not bursting out your eardrums. All the tracks on this don't have EQ whatsoever. Again, this is a raw demo, but let's listen to that again with the bass added. We can immediately tell that by adding that bass into it, it creates this yes and no type of thing, almost like a question and answer type of thing with the high range of the guitars, the really penetrating snarliness of the guitars, and then it gets like nicely evened up with that bass below. Again, if you EQ all of it, it's gonna sound 10 times better, of course, but this is for demo purposes, which is why I also chose a demo because I know a lot of people are looking for a good bass library to write out the bass parts for a demo and then track the guitars over it. So now that I have the bass parts for this down with the plugin, I can just go ahead and retrack all the guitars. I'll play it for you once again, and then I'll turn the bass on and off, and then we'll get a little bit deeper in how I programmed it. So with the bass on. Bass off. Immediately a difference. Bass off, and back on. No, it's, it's just, it, it creates this entire sub range that is not too overpowering because the tones in this plugin are absolutely amazingly captured, but it gives the demo more life. It gives it more power, gives it more punch. And I mean, this bass tone is just, if we go to this part right here, the fast part, Yeah. 
It sounds absolutely massive. Now, if we go into the settings of the plugin, there's a lot that you can do with this. So we have your random UI that pops up like this, where you can do the sub, I'll loop the part for you, and then we'll change some settings while we listen to it. So, take the sub away, sounds very sharp. Give it some more sub. Take the tone away, sharpness goes away. And then the humanize function, you don't hear it that hard. You, you can't really tell unless you're really listening, but it takes away some of the accents of the notes. We turn it back up. You can tell that if you turn it all the way up, it, the, 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 the notes sound different. Even, if even though it's the same note, the notes sound different. It sounds like they're pick differently um, and again you can do way more with that when you go into programming with velocities and stuff like that right here up here we have natural ascending and riffer I have it set to riffer if you take natural you can see where the frets are taking it go to ascending we get those really low strings which immediately change up the entire sound and that riffer is a mix of the two. Now we've heard the demo with the riffer, so. If I put it on ascending, way more body to it. Sounds absolutely incredible. Then your alternate picking, if you don't sync it up, You hear the difference when I switch from free to sync? Do it again. Listen to how the notes are picked. Now we'll go to free. Little nuances, little subtle nuances that you can tell that are changing up the way the notes are played and it humanizes it way more so it doesn't just sound like a MIDI bass piano. Now you can also just turn that off. And I'm guessing then basically everything is down picked, but everything also sounds the same then. So I like to have it on sync for demoing. Usually when I go into mixing, I'll put it on free. Just see what works best in your demos and your mix. Then into the settings right here. This is something that I think is really cool. So it's a six string bass that this plugin is made with. Let's take the riff that we have, which is in drop C. And let's go into the MIDI transpose. Super responsive, super, super tight if you want to do really low end stuff, eight string stuff, seven string stuff, uh, or just low tunings in general, this plugin can do that for you. Um, there's no need for a pitch proof or for changing up your MIDI mapping. You just go into the plugin itself, change the MIDI, done. So these three controls down here are to change your MIDI, transpose the tone, what you want. Um, and I think it's really cool that there's a pitch find control here because I always hear people say, oh, my guitar's perfectly in tune. It's not. There's not a single guitar in the world that is perfectly in tune throughout an entire song, which is why we record in sections and retune every time we record a single riff. If you want to humanize it, I like to do it, especially with stuff like this, Psycho Billy Punk Rock, that needs to be raw. It has to have that human feeling. It's not as polished and as programmed as gen. So I like to play around with the fine pitch, literally this control pitch fine says right here, and just tweak it a few cents here and there and it just humanizes the entire thing because nothing is ever perfectly in tune, especially with things like punk rock, psychobilly, hardcore, stuff like that. Things can be perfect. They cannot be computer perfect. And it's super cool to do that. Now over here, our velocity curve, this is basically what it says, it adjusts the velocity. So if I play the track, I pull it down. 
the pick attack is not as present as it was when we started listening. If I reset that, you can tell it's very, very harsh. And then if you turn it all the way up, All depends on what kind of bass player you want. If you want a bass player that hits his bass the way Matt Halpern hits his drums, you got to turn that all the way up. I can show you guys the MIDI right here, how I did it. I haven't changed anything in the velocities, so let's just listen. This is all the same velocity. Now, if I change that around... Amazing. Absolute. Th this really blows me away because you don't want to know how many plugins there are where if you change the velocity in the MIDI mapping, it just either it changes nothing or it screws it up entirely. This, this is how I would picture, well, not like this. I mean, these are some extreme curves, but if you're a good bass player, you can be as good as you want. You're not Nolly. Let's get, let's get that out of the way. Uh, and even Nolly doesn't hit or pick the same at every pick he does. When you play guitar or bass or any instrument for that matter, no one maintains the same velocity when it comes to picking, drumming, hitting, slapping, whatever you do on your instrument, blowing if you're a brass fan. It, no one does that at the same velocity 24-7, maybe not even to an entire song. If I play fast music like trash metal, I know damn well when I'm playing live, those picks are not going to be the same velocity the entire time. So the fact that you can just change that up by just get, getting your cursor here, like, let's do something extreme. Let's do, let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. Someone that has just started playing bass. And this is something that I discovered earlier today and I think is really cool. If we take a look at this section right here, when you take the velocity down, it sounds like a da 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 da. Like we do a lot in Gent. There's not many plugins out there that make that sound so good. But if we humanize it a little bit, let's see. Sounds absolutely amazing. Now, I haven't done that for the entire song yet, so let's glue all these items together. Ba-ba-boom, there we go. And then what we're doing, just to make it simple, ba. Please don't do this in your mixes the way that I'm doing it right now. This is just to show off the plugin. So now we've taken the entire track. Sounds so good. And now it sounds way more human. So with our plugin set the way that we want it, let's take a listen through to the entire song and then we'll have our final thoughts on it. God, I love the modern music era. Sounds so good, man. Sounds so good. Now, 
This is how this sounds in a demo like this. I am also working on a production with a heavier sound. I'll show you guys a snippet from it so you have an idea what's coming because this is going to be multiple videos. Um, I want to showcase this plugin in all its glory in every different setting that I can find it in. Um, and I'm currently working on doing that in a totally different setting. If you're a fan of the murder dolls, you might like this, uh, but this is what I'm working on for the heavy stuff. And there you can tell, I haven't finished programming the bass yet. It, it, it's such a difference, such a big difference. But yeah, it sounds absolutely amazing. My final thoughts on the product, it does what it needs to do and better. I am absolutely blown away. I've been in the market for a really, really good bass plugin for a long, long time now. And as soon as I saw the Nolly plugin, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Nolly and everything he does. I just, I knew I had to get it. And I was hoping that it would deliver the way that Nolly delivers. And goddamn, I can honestly say, just in case you guys start talking about clickbait, Nolly joined my band. That's how good the plugin is. Okay, that's how good it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about these plugins or what I do in my mixes, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll be doing more tutorials in the future and more reviews as well, obviously. I hope you guys learned something and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.